What's up, everybody? It's Buffalo Ben 15 Golf back at it again. And today we return to the Gaylord Golf Club out in Gaylord, Michigan for the back nine. If you remember from the front nine, I shot a pretty decent 40. It was a plus four, par 36. Back nine is also par 36. Playing from only about uh, 6,100 yards today. I'm playing uh, with a guy I know from Ferris, friends from uh, just a class we had together. And um, normally he plays the white tees. I wanted to play the blacks because they were only 6,500. Uh, but I was like, you know, the blues are only uh, two slope points different. So our compromise was just to play the blues, which is um, – about the same distance as his home course's whites. So we've kind of just talked through the first hole here. I've hit two pretty unbelievable shots, hopefully three here. And just like that, guys, we are off. That is an absolute dream start right there, guys. That is exactly what we needed to get us going here on this back nine. If you remember from the front nine, I was actually two over through seven holes. I was playing really well, and then I kind of fell off a little bit. Um, unforced error on a bogey on hole eight. Just kind of um, put myself in the wrong yeah. spot with where I was at after that second and um just played hole nine pretty poorly to be honest with you um something i thought uh gaylord country club or gaylord golf club i want to use gaylord golf club i do want to use proper terminology but it, because i will give this course credit they actually used to be called gaylord country club but uh, they didn't want people thinking they were private so they just changed to golf club and uh their goal in it was to be a little bit more inclusive to the locals and it certainly worked and it certainly worked for me too because i am three over through 11 holes now guys this is some pretty stellar golf so yeah as i was saying guys i was plus two in the last two holes to uh uh end the front nine and i'm minus one through the first two holes in the back nine talk about a turnaround and this drive, while not very far, kind of just a high on the face. I mean, you could tell my hands were just really tight to not a great really one, but tight it's good to enough. my head there. That was a very kind of cowardice swing. I definitely am starting to think, wow, this round is pretty spectacular. So I need to make sure I preserve this and not go out of bounds and just completely, um, just kill all of the momentum and just the uh security that i've nice. built within myself with my game and just another just Finally piped iron the irons have oh. been getting so much better as the day's gone on excuse jake's beer burps oh yeah excuse me i'd love to fool around with him and get a little loose but the fact is i got a good round going on i do not want to screw it up i tell you i've been asked by a few people do i ever drink do i ever smoke while i'm on the golf course the answer is no i'm about the most sober player you'll ever meet in your life well i'm 20 years old so that should be my answer but um I have been asked, and I do know people my age who do. That's gonna be a <laughs> and um, but you know, part of being in PGA management, you know, you just gotta set the example when it comes to just the way you conduct yourself. Not even just etiquette, but just personally conducting yourself too. And um, it's definitely uh, helped me uh, in that regard as well. Shot. Another birdie putt here. Right now, give it a chance. Give it a chance. <laughs> The very very close there man not all of them for from, from that range are going to go in though you can't expect that can't expect that either 
That's Can't he expect asked. that. <laughs> Three times over. Jeez. <laughs> Thought he could uh, use his playing partner to his advantage there, huh? Well, that backfired on you pretty quickly now, didn't it? All right. Well, all jokes aside, really solid par. I mean, that hole, other than the drive, that hole was played really well. Even the wedge that I had, it was hit great. I hit a sand wedge, and I thought, you know, this looks like a little bit of a flyer lie. I think I can get it back there. I was wrong. But you know what? I missed in the right spot. It was perfectly fine. We're in for par. We're plus 3 through 12. That's quarter bogey golf, guys. Here we go. That is something I don't say very uh, often. All right. Got a, only about just a 45-yard chip yet left. But that pin is right behind that bunker, and that is a big mound in front. And be only because, folks, that I just finished my second beer, that Bennett's going to make this in the hole. <laughs> Good luck. Wishful thinking, but also true. I'm a fact-based person. Here's another fact for you, JT. You put a lot of pressure on me with that there. Which I probably contributed to the play. first very big mistake of this nine. The two putt. Frick on a stick. YouTube, that is exactly what happens when you overthink golf. Right there. Yep. You know, whether JT was um, chirping in my backswing or not, I knew that that was going to happen pretty much. I mean, I, my chances of getting that shot on the green within how close this ball is going to end up probably 15%, not a high percentage shot. And because of that, on the shortest par four on the course at only 310 or 315, whatever it was, we've got a much longer putt for par than we definitely should have had. And uh, it results in a bogey, a very avoidable bogey. And that puts us to plus four once again. So five holes what to go. Guys deal with hitting my ball? Hopefully no more of that. Second hole in a row, he's rammed into my ball. I mean, I get it. He gave it to me in his head, but still. Is he aiming for my ball instead of the hole and reverse psychology? What is he doing, folks? So off to the par 3, 14th now. Definitely thinking, you know, this this is not in the bag yet. I'm, I, I'd am i be lying to you if I said I wasn't nervous. Uh, I actually played with JT a week before this at the Lakes course at the Loon Golf Resort, um, which is about 15 minutes away from where we're playing now. And um, I was plus four with three holes to go i believe and i shot an 81 i totally I collapsed i went ob to go, i took a triple and then i the and green. then i went bogey bogey i think it was awful it green, was awful but in a different area um, and um what was a shame is my front nine i shot an even par 37 because it's a 37 35 it was just total collapse and um you know, I, I would have filmed it still, I think. I mean, I shot um, I shot uh, under single digits over par still. I mean, uh, well, I did film it. I, I think I would have still posted it. But, you know, a couple of the shots, I was just rushed. Um, I was trying to get done really quickly because I needed to be back in Mount Pleasant by 2 o'clock to do an afternoon shift at Bucks Run. And, uh, you know, I, I did what I could. Um, but some of the angles were definitely not as well thought out as they could have been. And it just didn't look as good as it could have looked. It, it didn't do the course justice, for sure. With that said, though, I think Gaylord Country Club... You see, I'm doing it now. Gaylord Golf Club, guys. They rebranded. Um, I think that Gaylord Golf Club is still a nicer course than the Lakes course. Um, at just the greens, especially the, the greens are especially are just, they're, they're just so much truer, you know, um, the fairways are just, I mean, there's no like rough edges to the fairways. Like normally you won't 
get mad at like a couple yards of a kind of dead spot a, a little patchy like right on the edge of the fairway right but when you're playing uh a course that's part of the uh the loon trilogy which is like one of the most well-known golf resorts in michigan yeah. you're Perfect. not expecting to uh have a course with a ton of a ton of uh like spots like that and they're with i mean not that there were a lot it was a good course i play it again a full but there were yards. definitely more than i was expecting um that said i mean it's it's a nine out of ten course but this course is like a 10 out of 10 course like this is a beautiful course like everything about it as you guys are going to see my first bunker shot I think, of the day, well, why, if I remember yeah, right, I could I totally vape. be wrong there. Come on, bro. Don't vape, guys. As we yeah, talk about stuff, we probably like shouldn't that. be here. <laughs> but uh, yeah, here we are, guys. Uh, off to the, um, off to the bunker shot, and this is such a tough, tight little bunker shot. Like we're talking. Like two feet away. Cuffed it out of there, and boy, there is a fine golf shot from that lie. He put it about four, four and a half feet from the pin. Beautiful shot. Probably a one out of 40 or 50 shot there, guys. Like, that was an incredible, incredible shot out of where I was. Like, that sand uh, is, like, compact, you know? It's not, like, wet sand. It's, like, that dewy morning sand, kind of hard on top. You know, it's, and it's just, I, I did the best I possibly could have done with it. And hopefully we can capitalize here and really, really take some pressure off. Nope. No is the quick response to that question. I mean, I almost, I mean, that was a bad putt too. Like I, that was barely a gimme coming back. So, whew. Going to plus five now, three holes to go. This is definitely, I mean, considering what happened last week, this is no promises here. But I'm feeling good, even though it's, um, especially these last three holes on this nine, uh, hole, stroke holes six, four, and eight. This is stroke hole six. No matter what this the uh stroke rating of the course is absolute the bomb is, squad folks a drive like that's gonna help absolutely like Bang that was or... easily one of the best drives of the day for both of us as you see there really well done there guys um so just 125 pitching wedge into this green uh hopefully we can make short work of one of the longer par fours on the course this is another hole with an absolutely dastardly green slopes from back left to front right all the way took a very aggressive line with that bunker kind of right through where i ended up landing it and it spun all the way back to about 20 feet like i landed it was like a shot on hole three from the front nine if you remember how much that one spun back like I should have I should have left the pitch mark so you guys could have seen where it landed, but I still had to go up there, give this putt a try, and this is a really slick putt too. I mean this is preserve par here. Absolute perfection. The chance of us breaking 80 has just gone through the roof. Plus five going into 17. No, we're plus four. We're on pace for the round of the year. Even more good news. This next hole is south of 500 par five. Dog leg left. Oh man, guys. We play our cards right. This could be one of the best rounds ever recorded. Top three, maybe. I don't think we're going to get all the way to 74. We'd have to birdie both, but we can definitely birdie this. I tell you what, 
I know that that putt had a lot of luck involved in it. I know that I'm probably going to make less than 2% of those. Back-to-back -back holes, I've made like 1 in 50 shots. It's crazy how dialed I was today. And um, just the odds were totally stacked against me. Like I said, I got to JT's house at 1.30 in the morning to play golf before 8 a.m. later that morning, technically. And it was... I probably slept for five hours max, and it was just how in the world was I able to just come up with this amazing round where I've hit uh, nine, about to be ten. Or no, this is actually the eleventh green in regulation of the day, uh, now that I'm looking at the scorecard. Um, oh my goodness, this is just absolute clinic I'm putting on here. I mean, even that chip is just excellent. I gotta give away the whole So, um, but, I mean, we have to give credit where credit is due, right? Um, I've hit countless fairways today. I've been, I've been out of position. Like you saw, holes eight and nine were pretty much the only holes of the entire day where my shot after the drive, the second shot being like a punch out where I couldn't really do much. I definitely could have done something about that though. Are you? I would be even par on this round today if putts like that weren't happening. Putting, I tell you what, is probably the weakest point you guys have seen in the game today. I've made three pretty darn good ones, though, on this nine alone. But putts like those, like that one and the one on three, inside one on 15, have definitely of offset those. It's all right. We got one more hole. We can birdie that one. Going across the famous cobblestone bridge here at Gaylord Country Club. What a course. I tell you, I keep saying country club. I'm sorry. That was me in the past, obviously, that on that one. But still, guys, I got I to gotta say golf club. I, I cannot be denying the fact to your guys' face that this place is a public golf course. It is a pristine public golf course. And, yes, if you have pl ever played at a private country club before, this course is every bit as good as one of those. Absolutely. And I think that's part of the reason that I was just saying country club the whole day. I just thought I was at one, you know? Just I, I kind of lost myself almost. I kind of lost where I was and was just kind of seeing what was in front of me and not really thinking about um, the situation and uh, the atmosphere that I was around. And... Um, I mean, I, I still appreciated the atmosphere, but it was just like lost in all of uh, just what I was doing just because I was just so focused and uh, just so dialed today. And uh, it certainly helped. And uh, that's how I need to compartmentalize more courses going forward. But for a 36, back nine. 76 total, which would be the best of the year. I've had three 77s. None of which were recorded, by the way. And, uh, you know, I have been playing pretty well this summer. I know you guys haven't seen uh, that much great golf. You've seen definitely a decent amount of good golf, but definitely not great golf. Well, today that all changed. And one of my main goals today was to finally break 80 for the first time on this summer 2023 golf vlog season. We have officially done it with that nice cozy up putt. As much as I was pissed at it in the moment because I missed out on a 36. Sorry, no Patrick Coletta this time. It's still a tied PB this year.
pound for pound, hole for hole, I think it is safe to say this is by far the best round so far this year. Those other 377s, I mean, they were number one on definitely easier courses. Definitely the fields in Misaki are easier than here. Pineview Highlands, not that much, but a little bit. But this today, guys, I mean, those stats are insane. Eight out of 14 greens, or excuse me, fairways. And even when I was off the fairway, I was only in jail like twice. 11 out of 18 greens. I do believe that that is a personal record for me, at least on video. I don't think I've ever had 12. Um, I'm, I'm think, thinking right now throughout the all the rounds I've played this year, as well as the ones I've played between the one you're seeing now and when I'm doing this voiceover right now. And um, I can't think of one. Penalty free. 35 putts, though. That definitely was the the soft spot today, and I I, I, I could have easily. I mean, I would say my average putt totals per round this year has been maybe 31, 32. That's 73, 72 already, guys. Today was like eyes wide open type of good. Like this isn't something you just nod your head at and go on to your next round. This is a round you remember for a decent while. And I mean, I know it's not the best round I've ever had, but on a new course, um, on five hours of sleep, not even knowing I was going to be playing golf, to just driving up there in the middle of the night and just doing it and just gutting it out, that was an insane round of golf. At an insane venue, I tell you what, guys... Bucks Run is definitely the nicest course I've played this year. Definitely my number one favorite from this summer. I tell you what, Gaylord Golf Club gave Emerald a serious run for second. And, you know, based off of the fact that I shot better there, I might have to give the upper hand to Gaylord Golf Club. You know, it's... Uh, as crazy as that is to say, although nothing can beat the greens at the Emerald. I mean, even these greens, and these were easily like 11 and a halfs. Emeralds were like 12 and a half. Like the, and they're, they're 13 when they roll them in the morning, too. You guys caught me on one of the slower days at the Emerald. And that's, that's saying something, because they were still faster than these. But definitely not by much. Gaylord Golf Club still... Still really good. Um, but just everything about this course, the tee boxes, the bunkers, they even had first cut rough. Everything was just so clean. Just such a well-polished golf course. Get to Gaylord Golf Club if you're ever driving north on 127. Do yourself a favor. Take those extra five minutes to get off of the uh, exit. Don't go to the east I mean, I know there's uh, Otsego Club over there. I know there's the Loon Golf Resort over there. I know there's Mishaway Pines over there. And I'm sorry, JT, I'm advertising against your course. Um, I know there's uh, the Loon and the Lakes and the Ridge over there. But do yourself a favor and just go that opposite direction for a few miles on... M32, I believe, and get yourself the Gaylord Golf Club. You will not regret it one bit. I cannot wait for the next chance I get to play here, hopefully from the Blacks next time, and see if I can take this course down once again. Uh, that would be something to watch, wouldn't it? Man, a little bit shorter of a video this time, guys. I mean, when the when the golf is better, you play faster, right? So just an all-around amazing, amazing round. 
I I know there there were some weak spots, but honestly, I don't care. That was a beautiful round of golf. Definitely one that when I look back, definitely a highlight of the year. And hopefully I'm going to make some even more highlights. You guys are definitely going to see them if I do. This is Buffalo Ben 15 signing off. Have a good day, everyone.